Good afternoon. Welcome. My name is Beth Trzanski. I am the Deputy Director with Building Bright Futures, and thank you for uh, joining us today for a webinar to learn about the um, CCRSA grant for regulated child care. I'm happy to be here with uh, partners at the Department of Children and Families. Uh, Building Bright Futures is Vermont's Early Childhood Public-Private Partnership mandated by Vermont's Act 104 and the Federal Head Start Act to serve as a state advisory council on early childhood. Um, we are happy to bring some information to you that hopefully will be um, of assistance. Um, just some housekeeping. We are using the Zoom webinar platform, which means everyone, all participants are muted and do not have a video today. Um, and we will have time for, for the, the chat is closed, but you can use the question and answer function um, in the, um, the bottom uh, bar of your Zoom screen to ask a question. I would encourage you to listen to the presentation and then we will, um, we will uh, get to as many questions as we can, um, or um, they can be emailed um, to the, the email in quest, um, that we will share. So um, I want to turn this over to um, my partners at the Child Development Division. Miranda Gray is the um, newly appointed Deputy Commissioner um, for the Child Development Division. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much, Beth. I really appreciate you helping us host the webinar today. Um, and I want to thank you all. I see that we have 300 participants um, here with us today. I want to thank you all so much for finding um, the time to be able to join us and learn about this new program. Um, <clears throat> I'm hoping we have heard you. We know that we've put out a lot of programs and I'm, I'm hoping um, that you will find that we have taken your feedback and incorporated what we could um, into this new program. And so I will now turn it over to Sheila Duranilo, who is our oper um, director of programs. I need to unmute myself. Thank you, Miranda. Um, and thank you, um, Beth and Dora and BBF for hosting this opportunity. Um, we're excited to partner with you to bring information to all of you um, who are joining us today. We have a lot of information to cover. It says I'm muted. Am I muted? Can you hear me? We can hear you. We can hear you. Go ahead, Sheila. Can you hear? Okay, thank you. Um, so we're excited to um, present this information to you today. We have a lot of information to get to. Um, if you can just um, take some time and, and listen to um, what we present um, and then Heather will go through the forms and this, um, this presentation will be recorded. So you might also wanna take some time um, to listen to it again to really um, fully digest all of the information that we're presenting. So I'm going to run through the basics of the grant program, and then Heather's going to run through the um, document. Next slide, please. And again, this just um, mentions who we are. And oh, we can go to the next slide, thanks. And so we want to make sure that you know that um, we hope that we took the lessons learned, the information that you shared with us about the other programs that we've run, and we've put them into place. So we want you to know that we've heard you. You have, you've told us before that applications have been confusing. So um, we really believe that we have simplified the application for this process. Um, you've told us that the reporting requirements were burdensome. And so we believe that we have simplified the reporting requirements as well. Um, the spending categories were too restrictive. I think that you will be pleased to see um, how broad the um, spending categories are, are in this opportunity. And then um, the amounts to some people seemed like they were arbitrary. And um, for this opportunity, we're going to use a formula based on um, a different, uh, a couple of different um, uh, categories um, and the total amount of the um, money that's available. So, um, I, so people will um, be receiving an award based on a formula, much like the um, workforce stabilization program that we ran previously. So who's eligible? Um, and this information is on our website as well, regulated childcare programs as of March 31st. And um, you know who you are if you're regulated. This includes family childcare homes, licensed center-based childcare and preschool programs, 
and licensed after school programs. The program must be located in Vermont um, and the program must currently be serving children or plan to be serving children by June 30th. Um, if we could go to the next slide, I think that that would be helpful. Okay, how payment, let me, we'll go back to this other slide, but let me just talk a little bit about the payments, how they'll be um, cal uh, calculated and issued. I talked about how they'll be calculated. Um, again, we'll wait until all the applications are in and have been processed so that we know um, how much we can award to each program. Payments will be um, awarded on a monthly, a, a monthly basis. So if you're a pro, as long as a program is open and serving children. So if you're a program that's open now, a year round program, and you're gonna be open for the rest of the year, you will potentially, you will receive nine monthly payments. Um, but that's the way that this program is structured. Um, and the programs will be issued around the third week of each month. And you will be receiving the same amount every single month. So once you know, once you get your award agreement um, for the amount of money that you'll receive, you'll be able to plan on how you're going to spend your award because you will know exactly how much you're going to receive each month. The thing that is a little more challenging with this program than programs in the past that um, is required for us now that um, we have received several um, federal awards is that um, your award will be called an award agreement. And it's basically a grant from the state. So your award letter, if you've received award letters from our past programs, they've been simple letters that were about a page long. Um, this award agreement will be a couple of pages long and it will have components of a grant agreement um, that you will be certifying in your monthly report that, um, that you're following them. So it's important that you read all of the award agreement um, and that you will, that you're able to comply with it. I don't think that there's anything in this grant agreement that is different from anything of the other programs, but we do have to um, give it to you in writing now. Uh, then we can go back to the last slide. Perfect. Thank you so much. So what type of expenses are eligible? So now that you know you're going to be getting a monthly payment, you can spend that um, monthly um, award in any of these categories and they can vary from month to month. You don't have to tell us what, how you're going to spend them, you can decide. So one month you can spend them in maybe category one and three, PPE and other mitigation strategies and, and rent or insurance or mortgage. And then the next month you can spend them in materials and supplies and maybe um, uh, some bonuses for your staff. So any of these categories, which are pretty broad, are eligible um, categories to spend your award on. All right, we can go on. Next one, cool. And then the reports, we really, um, I think did a nice job of simplifying the monthly report you will, so you'll get um, your, your payment prospectively and your report will be retrospective. So when you submit your monthly report, there will be uh, a table of these categories of spending and all you do is have to check a box. So um, if I am submitting my report for April, I'm just gonna check the boxes that um, I uh, spent um, in the proper category in April. Your reports are due on the fifth of the month, and then we'll issue payments from that report um, in, uh, I hopefully, um, by the third week of that month. Any reports that are late, um, payments will be issued following the regular um, state's routine invoicing process, and they will, be, um, they will be later. We will not be able to process them as quickly as we can process a batch of reports um, from your report that you submit um, on or before the fifth. And then there will, there's a different reporting form for the final report. So for programs that are open all year long, your final report will be due at the end of the December or possibly the beginning of January. Um, and that is where you'll include the totals that you spent in each of those reporting categories. So even though you don't have to report on them monthly, 
You will need to keep track of the amount of money that you're spending in each category. And you will then send those totals to us in those amounts um, in your very last report. Next slide, please. So here is just an example of the payment schedule and um, the reports. So if you look at the top um, left-hand um, information, the first payment is issued after the application. So you submit your application by March 31st, and then the third, around the third week of April, we will issue you a check. And then on or before May 5th, you will submit your monthly report and then which will be, um, you'll be checking off the categories of spending that you spent in April. And then you'll get your check um, about the third week in May. And it just goes forward like that until the end of the year. If you are a program that, um, a summer program and you're not starting up until, um, until the summer, you will get your first check the third week of the month that you start up. And then that following fifth of the month, you will um, need to submit a monthly report in order to um, for your checks to start coming. And then if you end before the end of the year, if you're a summer program, then you will submit your final report around the 20th of the month that you, um, you ended your program. Next slide, please. All right, so Heather um, is going to uh, walk you through the documents that are required for this program. Yep, so Dora, if you wanna go ahead and click the link to see the application, great. So what you'll see uh, at first is just the description of who qualifies um, and that, and then you scroll down. So don't, don't worry, just scroll down and you'll see the categories and then you see the application. So uh, the first uh, field is your program name. This is the, the name that's listed in Bright Futures Information System. So if you're a registered provider, it's your own name. If you're a licensed center, it is the name as listed in BFIS. The licensee organization name, this one is optional. So you'll actually see that um, some questions have a little bitty red asterisk next to them. That means they have to have an answer. Um, the licensee organization name is optional because for registered providers, you've already provided that. But for a center, if you operate your organization and your corporation has a different name than the license, then we do need to know that. Um, so you'll enter that there. That's what your uh, licensed, uh, your how you receive funds, such as what would be on your IRS documentation. Uh, your license number is listed. You need to type that um, as we have it on your license. Uh, so there is one application per license number. You will be able to do reports for multiple licenses if you hold multiple licenses. Um, and we'll get there when you see that. Um, but the applications, we do need one per license. Um, and then we also need to know what town your program is licensed in. That way, just if there's information that's not matching, we can make sure that we can match to the correct information and verify that we do have you as a regulated child care program. Um, and then your mailing address, this is the address that you receive uh, money at. Um, this way we can verify that we have the correct information to where to send the grant payments. Um, who we should contact below is the contact person for the grants. Um, it would be most helpful if that person can stay the same throughout the grant period. Um, and then the phone number and email of that person. When you, after you've submitted the application, whatever email you put into that email field is going to be sent a copy of what you submit. So it's important that you use the email that you want that information to go to, or if the contact person is different from the person that would like a copy, um, that you put the contact person's email in here, and then when you receive the email that they then forward it on to whoever they want. Um, one of the things that we have experienced is we are using a technology called JotForm. Um, sometimes if you don't open those emails, they might go to your junk or your spam. So if you know you submitted, but you didn't get a copy of what you submitted, please look in your spam or junk um, 
often it's sitting there. Otherwise, you can email um, our email for the grant, and um, we can try and find, we can get you a copy and make sure that we re did receive it. But first, check your junk and your spam. Um, and so then you're going to indicate what type of license you have. Um, so if you want to pick registered home for me, Dora, that would be really helpful. All right, and then um, uh, you're gonna pick your operation schedule. So if you pick operate year round, go ahead and pick that Dora just for now. Um, it's gonna ask you, are you currently serving children? Meaning are you open and operating right now? Or you may not be operating right now, but you do plan to open before June 30th. And so if you wanna go ahead and click plan to serve children by June 30th, then you will have to tell us um, when you actually plan to open. Um, Dora, if you want to just change that, yeah, to the operating part year. So if you operate part year, for example, maybe you operate a public school preschool program or you operate a, um, a ski in a ski resort, so you're open during the ski season, um, you know, any variation, or maybe you're a summer program, so you only operate in the summer. Uh, you can, you'll pick operate part of the year, meaning you have some large periods of closure period. And then you wanna enter your opening date and your closed, closing date. And for some people, for example, public schools, you might be open right now. And so you could say, I open September of 2020 and my last day of school is June something of 2021, and then you're going to reopen in September 2021 and right and go through the grant period. So you would actually have two periods of opening and closing. We're doing that to ensure that when we capture what months you're actually operating in, and we can ensure that payments are issued on those months. Um, and so depending on each answer is what you will, uh, the questions you'll get. Um, so if you scroll down, um, so there is a, uh, an acknowledgement and then you sign and to sign or if you want to just click in the signature and just squiggle around, and you know, actually, need to, yeah. So if you're on a computer and you haven't done any of our job forms before, um, if you're on a phone or a tablet and you ha or have a touch screen, you can just touch it and sign with your finger. If you're on a computer, you can click on it and sign with your mouse. Um, any of those options is perfectly acceptable, but it does allow you to do that. And then you would hit submit and you will receive, as I said, you'll receive a copy of the application um, and we will in our email receive a copy of your application as well. So that is the application. Dora, if you wanna go back and go to the monthly report, and if you want to click on that link, there we go. There we go. All right. So uh, as Sheila said, you'll apply. We will issue uh, the award letters. Um, and then there will be a monthly report that's required. And so you will be given a link to the monthly report. It'll also sit on our website. Um, and it will be due on the 5th of the month. Uh, so this is the reporting form. Again, the organization, so this, the application you need to do one for every license number. For uh, the monthly report, if you operate multiple licenses under one corporation or business, you can, the one business can do the report and you're gonna just put all of the license numbers here. So here, you just have organization name, and that will be the organization that received the grant. Um, for example, I'm gonna call somebody out. Uh, the Y is one large organization with multiple licenses. The organization would be the Y, and then, then they would actually put in the different licenses that they received awards for. Um, so if there are multiple licenses, um, Dora, if you want to just, yeah, there you go. You can just add more and keep adding. If you're a registered home or you operate one program, you will put your organization name, um, your business name or your, your, you as an individual, and then you would just put your license number. 
Um, again, here's the contact information for the reports, the phone number, the email. The email is the one that will receive the copy of the report. So uh, ensure that that's uh, entered correctly. Um, and then as Sheila stated, you will have uh, the different categories of spending that are available. And you're going to report each month on where you spent the money. So in May, you'll report where you spent the money in April. So you, yep, just like Dora's doing. So you just click which ones that you spent the money. At least one has to be clicked, um, but click the money, the which ones, um, and and then move on to the next one. And then you just tell us which report you're doing. So is it the May report? Is it the June report? Um, and then you go farther down. Um, and then there is some um, information that you are agreeing to. It's important to read each of those things. Um, a lot of it refers to the award letter that you're going to get. Um, and then you're going to sign, just like you signed the application. Uh, and scroll down a little bit more. You're going to print your name so we know who this is coming from and the position title. Um, so we have some context of who is submitting the report and you'll hit submit. Um, and then I think the next thing we're going to do, Dora and Sheila, is the award letter. So if you want to go back to Sheila for the award letter and then I can do the final report and what that looks like. Thank you, Heather. So this is the award agreement. Um, there's some there's some information in this um, that is not relevant. Uh, we'll take this out. But in your award letter, you will get um, it will be several pages long, and you will get um, the last three pages are really your award agreement. And um, it's just as if you are receiving a grant from the state because that's what you are receiving. And so this will have, this page will have um, regular information in it. And I, is this the only um, screenshot we have of this, Heather? Okay, all right, so that's fine. Um, and then there will be some, um, some grant um, uh, conditions that you should read and you should become familiar with. You do not have to sign or send anything back because in your first um, monthly grant report, you're certifying that you agree to the conditions of the, um, the grant agreement. This agreement will have um, your monthly total and it will have your whole award total. So if you're um, open and receiving nine monthly payments, you'll get mm -hmm. you'll, um, this letter will identify your monthly payment and it will identify the total that you will receive within those nine months. If you are um, a summer program and you're open for three months, the, this uh, award letter will identify your monthly um, total and the total for all three of those months. So um, it, it, is a, it can seem a little intimidating um, if you've never received one of these before. Um, but I, again, I think it's all of the same information um, that uh, you have been required to certify to in the past, but you should read it. Um, and become familiar with it. And by um, signing and accepting this money, you are agreeing to all of these conditions. And I do think that most of the federal money that we get um, in the future, um, we will have to be um, awarding it in this way as well. Heather? All right, I think we're ready to see the final report. You wanna click on that. Um, all right, so uh, for programs that are, for programs that operate all year, um, this will be due December 20th. Uh, for programs that operate part of the year or don't operate up through December, they're going to be due the 20th of the last month of operation. Um, as you can see, if you have any questions, you can always email um, our grant program and we'll get back to you. Um, so you'll notice this is very similar to the monthly report. So organization name, uh, license number, which you can add more of. So you can do one report per uh, fiscal agent or owner of program and multiple licenses. Um, 
you're gonna have the contact name, the phone number, the email address. And then what you're going to see is, um, is that I need to move some things. Don't worry about that. <laughs> um, so in the categories where you spent funds, in your monthly report, you're going to click the categories and tell us where you spent the funds. In the final report, you do need to report to us how much you spent in each category. So you do need to maintain that information for your own records. Um, and if we uh, do ask you for information, you would need to provide that to us, but you would add that um, here, total amount. And actually, Dora, can you do me a favor and quickly scroll up and just type test in organization name? Okay, and now scroll back down to those categories. All right, and can you put, yeah, some, like a dollar or something into. So what you'll see is as you enter that information, this uh, the uh, box below will actually start populating a number. So as you do that, it will add up the different uh, boxes. The total went before you submit, make sure that that actually matches your total award so that we don't need to spend time um, back and forth with you trying to figure out what the differences are. Um, so that will do it. You cannot type into the total grant spending. It is a read only field. You must change it in the categories for it to be accurately re represented. Um, and then, yep. And then if you want to go down, Dora, did what you're certifying to, again, you'll sign it. Um, you will print your name, you know, write your name, do your position title. And then you hit submit and uh, the email will receive a copy of uh, what you submit for your final report and um, will also receive that copy. And then uh, Dora, if you want to go back to the PowerPoint. And so this link, I don't know that you need to go to. Um, the one also thing we wanted to make sure that grantees uh, know about is that that you will be required to submit this sub recipient report on the funds that you received. Um, for many programs, you may be familiar with it now um, based on some programs we ran last year, um, or it might be a common thing for your programs. But if not, we uh, will provide and have provided in multiple places the link to this report. It is done at the end of the program's fiscal year. So for many programs, that is the end of the calendar year that they will report on the funds. Um, if you have questions on um, numbers to put in there, well, we can't give you guidance specifically on the report. We can give you um, the, for example, the CFDA number and things like that when, when it would be most appropriate. So feel free to reach out if you have those types of questions. Um, I think that's it. And now we're at questions. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much, Heather and Sheila. We have a lot of questions. People are really excited. So um, you answered some of them. Um, so thank you for that. Um, why don't we start? Uh, I'm seeing some themes. <laughs> so um, uh, mm -hmm. there's a couple of questions about um, if people have received previous uh, COVID related funds, whether it was PPP loan um, or you know, other relief dollars. And is there any relation if people can apply for, if they've received those other um, loans or grants? There's no restrictions. This is a completely different grant opportunity. So there are no restrictions based on prior um, applications or receipt of funding. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, there was a question if funds need to be um, related to COVID response and can you um, restate what what you shared earlier? Sure. Um, if you um, in your program feel like the activities um, within those categories are mitigating the spread of COVID and um, then yes, they, I mean, they do have to have some relation to um, the spread of COVID. Um, you know, when I think about um, capital expenses, I think about um, some of the things that people um, applied for in the org op funding opportunity and, um, and either didn't know if they were going to get the money, so didn't spend it. But 
you know, some people um, applied for new entryways so that you know, they could separate um, children as they entered, um, new cubby space so that children's um, materials could be further apart, outdoor classroom areas, um, new flooring, um, taking up carpet and putting down different kinds of flooring. You know, all of those things um, can be categorized as, um, you know, limiting or stopping the spread of the disease. But um, yes, that connection does need to be made in some way. Thank you. Um, there were mm -hmm. also a couple of questions about eligibility, um, uh, whether um, public pre-K programs are eligible, um, and, as well as, yeah, so why don't we start there and then there were a couple of others on that line. So um, if you hold a license and you're regulated through the Child Development Division, you're eligible. And so folks who are serving both the zero to six as well as you know, a school age, um, age group are eligible. Um, there are there were some questions about what if you get to the end of your of the grant period um, and have unexpended funds. Well, we we really hope that that doesn't happen. Um, it is very difficult for us to receive money back. Um, these categories are are very broad, and um, you know uh, there are bonuses for staff and um, you know supporting staff to continue to come to work. Um, when they're struggling um, maybe personally with components of, um, of the pandemic and um, or um, you know, taking care of relatives or family members that might be at risk. Um, you know, that's how we relate the um, bonuses to staff um, as related to COVID. Um, you know, there are some ways that you can plan to expend the money um, should you feel like you have some um, that that you can't buy anything else with, or you know, you're not going to do a capital improvement. Um, so it does take a little bit of strategizing, I think. Once you know your monthly amount and then your total amount, depending on how many months you're going to be open, I think that um, what I would do is I would look within those categories and then look at my program and then actually make a plan, strategize how you might spend the money. Thank you. Can I? I just want to add to the um, so the money is expected to be spent in the in in the month, um, but I would always, as we had in a few of the other programs, if you're concerned about being able to expend the money, well, we can't give necessarily specific uh, advice. Um, we can, you know, maybe brainstorm with you. So if you do receive the funds and you need some help, I would reach out to the email address um, before the end of the grant period to, so that we can help brainstorm with you. Thank you. Um, there were some other questions around eligibility if um, family child care homes are eligible to um, give themselves benefit bonuses or is it just for centers? No, it's for any applicant. Thank you. Um, here's a question that says, um, we are applying for one grant um, uh, and that will be dispersed between multiple licenses. Um, so will one grant be dispersed across multiple licenses or will, you, um, will there be one grant per license? Heather, do you want to talk about how that will work with the application, or is that something that we haven't, the a detail we haven't um, been able to work out yet? Um, I think the, the application is per license. The how the grant award is actually issued, um, I, do, I think that's a detail that we will we'll work out and we'll put into our frequently asked questions. Um, if, if a program that has multiple licenses will receive multiple grant awards or one grant award. Thank you. Um, there's a question if you can recap how the total grant uh, amount granted is being calculated. We have, um, we have a couple of different formulas that we have developed. Um, some based on group size, some based on um, classroom size or capacity. 
and some based on number of teachers. So once we receive all of the applications, so we know how many applicants we have, we will run each of those scenarios and then um, Commissioner Brown will actually choose the, um, the option that we will use for to um, award these funds. And can you just remind us how much is being set aside? A little over $12 million. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, so there's some questions about um, about that schedule um, in terms, well, about the schedule in terms of um, uh, if there'll be any kind of taking account of what, uh, how many months uh, programs are open and um, compared to um, some people may be open um, nine months, others may be open three during this period. Yes, and, and that's why it's really important to put your open and close date on the application because we will run those formulas based on the amount of months that a program will be open. So if you're, if you're a program that's only open three months during the summer, you will get three monthly payments and, and that will figure into the award. Thank Does you. that answer the question? Um, so there was a, another similar question, which is um, if some programs may close for a week or two um, between, you know, before the summer program, does that account for closing um, or would that be uh, more or less a year, year round program? I, I would imagine that that would not count for closing, regular closes like that, but we will, um, we will confirm that in the frequently asked questions as well. Thank you. Um, there, there have been many questions. So, <laughs> um, uh, do you want to just talk about the frequently asked question document that you've put together? Because, um, uh, uh, and and then maybe um, just re re um, debrief the categories of spending. There's some questions about uh, the categories. We didn't see that slide for very long, so maybe Dora, you can pull that up again. All right, um, Heather, do you want to also maybe pull up the frequently asked questions? Would that be helpful, do you think? I think um, just so that. they're not yet on the website. We're going to publish them probably tomorrow morning after because we, we wanted to receive some of the questions that we knew were common. We do have we have created a I want to say it's probably an eight page document of questions we received on other programs that we so we were predicting would come up in this question, this program as well. And so we will publish that probably tomorrow morning and we will let programs know as soon as it's available. Um, I, I, when I'm scanning through many of these questions, they will be answered. Many of them will be answered in our frequently asked questions. Um, and I wanna say uh, Dora has brought up the categories and I think I answered it, but uh, if not, um, if you go to the website where, and the website was in the announcements for the program, um, the web page, the categories are listed on the web page, so you'll be able to um, see those. That's where the frequently asked questions will be. That's where the application link will be published this afternoon. Um, that the that will be there as well. So, all right. So, yeah. Go ahead. Do you want Let's to go back to the categories? Questions. The categories of spending. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> there's a question if. Um, if you can use grant funds towards utilities? Yes, so here are the, um, here are the um, broad categories. And when you think about the, the categories under occupancy, rent, insurance, mer uh, mortgage, or utilities, one might think, how is that related to COVID? Um, but if your, um, if your monthly income has been reduced because of um, low enrollment, then you have not been um, receiving, you know, the funds that you usually receive when you run your business. So um, these expenses, um, you know, we can relate them to a loss of income due to, um, due to COVID. Um, uh, the capital improvements I talked about a little bit. Um, uh, there were some very creative um, capital improvements with the org opportunity, a lot of outdoor expansions. Um, and, and then, you know, there were some um, refrigerate, new refrigerators, um, dishwashers in order to, um, you know, the newer dishwashers um, have a higher water temperature. Um, uh, 
I'm trying to think of um, some air quality um, uh, products or HVAC systems for some larger programs. What, what else? Are there other kinds of questions, Beth, in the chat around um, these categories? Sure. Um, so some of them you just answered. One question, can we purchase a large item such as a large canopy so we can move meals outside? Um, how, would, how would we record that since it would likely be more than a single month's payment? Why don't we, um, we'll grapple with that in the frequently asked questions. Yeah. Because some, um, of these, some of these um, expenses are going to be larger than um, the monthly payment. So let us grapple with that in the frequently asked questions. Um, there, there's a number of questions around bonus bonuses or um, one person said, if we have um, lost enrollment, is that money we can pay ourself um, and use for payment in, in lieu of payment? You can replenish lost um, enrollment. You can't, um, you can't claim anything that you've um, received through subsidy payment, CCFAP. But if your enrollment is down, then um, absolutely that's a loss of loss of income. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There are some questions about purchasing of supplies um, and if they have to be COVID related. Um, I would imagine you know there's some questions about kind of educational materials, that type of thing. Sure. Um, certainly, um, if you have more educational um, or activity. Um, supplies and materials and children don't have to share. So that is part of a strategy to prevent um, the spread of, of the virus. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of questions about communication and um, if you can um, remind us what communication people can expect in terms of receiving prompts to submit monthly reports, if there'll be prompts to submit a, a end of year report. There will be prompts. We already have developed some um, emails that will automatically go out around the first of the month to let the contact person, now uh, that's important, um, Heather mentioned that as well. The email that you use in the application um, will be the email that receives the information. So we'll have a, 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 a reminder email at the beginning of the month that your report is due. We'll have a reminder email at after the 5th um, we hope we don't have to send many of those out because that, um, that payment process is different than the payment process if you get your, um, applicate your monthly report in by the 5th and it takes longer. So if you submit an application, uh, a monthly report, excuse me, after the 5th, um, your check, your, your award will not come as timely. Um, and then there will be some um, reminders for the final report. Thank you. You're welcome. There's a couple of questions um, about monthly payments. So for example, especially for um, large, paying for large items, um, uh, if given a monthly amount, can, can someone carry over expenses and pay out of pocket? Example, um, if they are getting a new floor and it costs $500, but their monthly expenses are 350, can they carry funds over from one month to pay for that larger bill? Yes, I, I mean, I think that's absolutely going to be possible. I mean, people aren't going to do capital improvement projects with a monthly payment. So again, we'll, we'll clarify that in the frequently asked questions, but um, absolutely, I think that that will be the approach. Thank you. Heather, are there other questions you're seeing that you wanted to address? No, I think I answered some. I, I, I will say again that, I mean, there's some that are very specific here that we'll try to answer, but if you don't see, sometimes when I answer something, I'm answering it very generally and I frequently ask questions. So I would encourage everybody to wait until the frequently asked questions come out tomorrow, I'll review those. But if you're still not quite seeing the answer to your question, feel free to reach out to the, the program email. And, and we'll get back to you with the answer. Um, sometimes it may take a couple of days because we need to do some research before we answer it. So just be patient with us for a couple of days at least, but um, we hope to be able to do that. So I don't know that I see any other questions. Great. Well, certainly, you know, 
it's great to see so much interest and to have this opportunity. So I want to thank um, thank our partners, um, Heather and Sheila um, and Miranda from uh, the Child Development Division for joining us. And we will look for the frequently asked questions. Um, BBF has recorded this and we will post um, the information that we have. I'm, I'm sure you know it will go up um, on the CDD's website as well. Um, so folks can re-watch the webinar as well as have, have access to the FAQs in the application. Is there any closing thoughts that you wanted to share as people go and dive into those materials? I, I do just want to say that um, I'm so appreciative that there's over 300 people on this, um, this website, but um, we know that we have over um, you know, 1,100 um, registered regulated providers. So we really want to spread the word and we really want to make sure that um, people complete an application because everybody who's regulated is eligible and we really want people to receive this money. Thank you. Sheila or Heather, can you remind us when applications are due? March 31st, 11.59 p.m., March 31st. Great. Thank you. And very I much. do yeah. want to say, just because I've seen a last question, we will be sending an email out to regulated programs probably tonight and then again tomorrow about the program. In that email, um, it will have who to contact for questions. So uh, feel free. Right there's the, the web page. The frequently asked questions will be there and the contact. Uh, the contact email is here, but it also is on our website. So, you know, go ahead and favorite that link to that web page um, so that if you lose anything, you can always go back there and we'll put it there as well. Thank you for um, everyone for tuning in. We will um, have all this information posted as soon as possible. Have a good afternoon. Thank you so much. Bye-bye now. Thank you. Bye.